Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully. Today we're going to talk about free shipping because it's a super hot topic. As of July um, 30th, I believe is the date, Etsy has said they're going to be giving priority to sellers who offer free shipping over $35. And uh, I pulled up the email that I got, and I'm going to be pulling up all different resources as we go through this. But I just wanted to make sure that I told you exactly what they said. Um, they're going to give priority placement in the U.S. search results to items that ship for free and stores that offer free shipping guarantees to buyers on orders of $35 or more. And that's to United States buyers. And all, I'd, all orders under $35 will ship based on your existing shipping settings. And what they're talking about with this is they have a tool inside your shop manager. Let's go ahead and uh, see if I can pull up my shop manager. Do, do, do. Okay. So if you click get started here, setting up the free shipping guarantee is easy. Turn on the shop wide free shipping. Um, next, you can bulk item prices $35 and up to recover shipping costs. That meaning you can add to your the price of your product. Now, I am not going to um, go into the legality. I am not a lawyer. I'm a marketing person or the ethics of just adding a like the whole cost of shipping is now in the price. That's not what we're talking about today. I really want to focus on um, your shop and considerations that you should have about whether to offer free shipping or not. Okay, so now let's go right back to regular Etsy. Oops. If I could type, I would be unstoppable. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is your is your item unique, right? Because one of the considerations is, do you sell something that is a commodity? So a commodity would be a gold necklace. A commodity would be um, vanilla soap, something like that. Sorry about that. I have a crazy busy house. Um, but uh, but but so commodities are if you're selling something that is just basic, right? Planner stickers, um, something like that. If you're selling, so if we do a search for planner stickers, as an example, we see that there are 360,000 results. And in that case, you want to make sure, like that's a lot of competing shops. And if 107, if half of the planner sticker people um, offer free shipping, you're not going to be able to show up in um, search, right? Oh, I thought of something else. Sorry. This is going to be, um, because this is real, this is people's shops, this is something that's important. Um, I think that it's worth taking the time to talk about this. And I've had so many um, of the gals that follow my blog, which is Marketing Artfully. I have a whole Etsy section. Or um, that are in my uh, Facebook group. I will make sure to put a link to my Etsy Facebook group um, where you can come and ask questions. But the first question for me is, is your item unique? So I sell vintage doorstops. And not vintage inspired, but vintage doorstops. I sell all kinds of vintage stuff, but vintage doorstops comes to mind. So there's 2,575 results. For me, that is a, an amount that is way different than half a million. Um, then I would take into consideration whether I was going to offer free shipping. And something else that's going to come up is what size and what so we've kind of figured out weight so this is number two um what size and weight are your items so my a, a vintage doorstop can weigh up to seven or eight pounds and that i can oftentimes put in a flat rate box so that's going to give me a um the ability to reduce my shipping costs based on weight and they're generally you know regular size 
But last week, I sent out a package that had exceeded the dimensional size that is normal pricing. And so I wound up, even on that, eating $20 of the shipping cost because the amount that the buyer had paid didn't cover the increase that the USPS has put on dimensional size, meaning that they measure the width, the length, and the height. And if your item is large, then the cost is really high. So that cost of shipping, and of course it went to California, I'm in Florida, was $70. Now, if I had added $70 to the price of, and it was a vintage, vintage uh, ice bucket, or a vintage cooler, okay, let's, say vintage cooler. So there's 4,000 items, and it was a really cool one. It was um, like this one, right? So this person is charging $40, and the shipping is $28. So this may be a little smaller than mine is, but if mine was listed at $170 to cover the shipping, even if you love it, like it's not it's not effectively looking at apples to apples when you have really large items and high shipping costs. So that's something to consider when you're deciding on your shop whether you want to offer free shipping. Number three, are you hoping to sell multiples? So this one, this one scares me a lot for Etsy sellers who, because this is the concept of selling multiples. Somebody may just buy a um, $17.50 necklace or, or let's talk about something a little bit bigger because for the jewelry it's not as... Somebody may buy a $17.50 candle, but if they get free shipping, if they go over $35, the thought is that then they will buy more at your store, right? So let's talk about a $17.50 candle, which is going to be a relatively heavy item to ship. So you have the cost of supplies to make the $17.50 candle, which, you know, say the shipping is going to be $10, right, for one candle. So you have the cost of the supplies to make it. You have your time to make it. You have all of that. So, so if you charge shipping, your net profit say is $12, right? Bear with me here. And then they pay the shipping charge. If you offer free shipping on $35 or more and they buy two candles and you can't fit the two candles into the same size box, now either you're going to have two shipping costs or you're going to have a larger dimensional shipping and a heavier dimensional shipping and it could really cut into the profits from your store. So if you're choosing to do free shipping, and I think everybody needs to make that choice, you definitely need to make sure that you are taking that into consideration, either raising the prices of your items, assuming that they're going to be, um, you know, the, the cost of um, multiples, right? And the reason why I'm so, I've been in e-commerce a very long time. I've been doing internet marketing since um, 1999. And I've watched shops, big, big, well-funded stores go out of business. And the one that comes to mind is Pets.com. And what they did was they tried to do that sell on volume thing where they would have very low margins and trying to do it in um, volume and they had millions of dollars of venture capital money, and they still couldn't make that business model work. So for me, that's something that I would be very careful of that. Selling, you know, counting on the increased quantity of sales to cover the fact that there's free shipping, especially if you're not rolling the entire cost of the free shipping into your item. Number four, do your, do your competitors offer free shipping? Now, one way you can check this, so let's say you do sell, let's do candles again. So say you sell vanilla candles. Oops, darn it. 
Hold on one second. Vanilla candles. I think vanilla candles is something we can all think of. So there's 10,000 results, which to me isn't actually crazy because I actually like vanilla coconut candles. Okay, vanilla coconut. I lost an O. Vanilla coconut candles. Okay, so there are 590 vanilla coconut candles results. These first ones are ads, so we're going to skip by those. And then we need to see free shipping. So then you want to check on the sizes. So this is these look like votive candles. Um, the first three offer free shipping. So we're seeing that there is even now a little bit of premier placement for that. And then they're sprinkled throughout. Now it'll be interesting to see after the switch if all of the free shippings go to the top. Um, you know, I think that that's a good thing. And I don't want to say threat. I do want to say threat. It's a good threat to us to say, you know, we're going to drop you in in search. But I'm here to tell you, if this if there's a best selling candle that everybody buys, like this one, best seller, and they don't offer free shipping because it's six dollars and twenty five cents, and they can't afford to send it out at almost four dollars and make two dollars, then um, then at some point there's a value to products that people want to buy even if they aren't free shipping right so that's a thing so you can check this way just going through a search you can also do command or control shift new and oops i don't know why that happened I'm trying to open an incognito window. Sorry. Nope, that isn't what I'm trying to do. But you can open an incognito window and get an even better idea. Um, nope, it's not working. Uh, if, if the people do without being logged into Etsy. So just something to think about. The other way that I do it is to, um, I use a, a, software called Marmalade and say we do vanilla coconut candle okay and they aggregate meaning they get it all together all the information about whether your competitors are offering free shipping so it's thinking it's thinking and when I record it's not usually this slow when I record videos it kind of hangs up my entire um entire okay ship it so the minimum shipping is 250 so it seems like people are really charging shipping the average shipping price is 596 which would be the cost approximately of sending it in a padded uh priority mail mailer and the maximum shipping is 1155 and a lot of times when you see that you want to think do they um do they sell multiples? Do they sell sets? Like, is that a really large item that they're doing that for? And then they have this really cool, um, on average, listing with free shipping are priced $519 higher. That's less than the cost of shipping. So sellers in this exact category are not covering the cost of shipping. Now they're covering part of it, but it seems to me like what Etsy's saying is, and I was watching a video of a gal that was speaking yesterday, and she says that shipping is usually about $8. She covers half of it, $4, to make the shipping costs a little bit lower for her customers. But Etsy is saying that even having any shipping cost is not acceptable to them. So that's something to think about. I'll have a link to Marmalade below so that if you want to check it out, um, you can do that. All right. Next. Do you sell frequently overseas? I understand that if you use, what we've been told is if you use the shipping converter thing that I showed you, that they will take the increased cost out of overseas sellers. That has always been, even shipping across the country. So let's talk about the cost of shipping especially now that first class is done by zones instead of being free across the country. So I live in Florida, so everything, 
everywhere I ship is out of mostly out of my zone. Shipping to California is quite expensive and a lot of my customers come from California and a lot of them go to the um, New England. So New ha I'm very popular in New Hampshire, um, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. And so um, if I was going to offer sh free shipping without the tool, which seems to be able to do calculating shipping costs, um, then I would have to price everything as if I was shipping it to California, right? On To cover my business, um, you know, the whole split the difference, well, do it as if it's going to Chicago and you can just eat the extra cost if it's going to California. I don't run a business where I eat costs. I run a fair business where I charge the people the amount of shipping that it costs. I put in the correct dimensions of what it's going to be and then I, you know, I charge them the amount of calculated shipping. I don't have handling fees. I don't have restocking fees. I offer refunds. I mean, like I am operating within Etsy as the type of business I want to operate as and I'm not going to be offering free shipping um, until I see what's going on. Okay. Do you do promoted listings? So this is number, I guess, seven-ish. Um, so let's look at my vintage shop and see how many of, oh, I'm getting all kinds of messages. Oh, because I logged into here. Okay, so I don't know how to close this. There we go. Okay, so let's log into my vintage shop and see if how, how I guess of my sales let's see stats let's see stats okay and this is my traffic stats explore my data it's coming from Etsy the Etsy app external and direct so so Etsy is sending functionally um, 37 28 65 65 so a good portion of my um, traffic is coming there. So here's promoted listings. Let's see if we can get a breakdown of promoted listings. Okay, so search and promoted listings. So I pay for promoted listings. So one thing that you can do is if you're not going to, so 10,000 impressions, 82 clicks, cost me $14 and I made $39 revenue. Okay. If you're not going to offer free shipping, let's call a spade a spade. You get the top three and intermittently. Um, so let's say vintage ephemera, right? The top three out of 132,000 are ads. So you can get into there by paying for promoted listings instead of paying to like instead of rolling the dice and hoping that you get more sales because you offer free shipping so every fourth row is ad so you would be able to pay for promoted listings and to get into those ads so that's something to think about also when you're trying to make your decision now, let's go back to my real uh, digital Etsy shop only because I want to show you this. And I know a lot of you girls are doing Instagram. You're doing a lot of stuff to drive traffic to your stores. Last is where does your traffic come from? So for my digital product shop, which I have much higher numbers on, it's more of a part of the revenue of my um, site, Etsy is only driving... 30% of my traffic. I am driving the rest of it from my website, from my emails, from Quora, from my website, from guest posts I've written, from all different places, from my social media efforts, from Pinterest and from, so from Pinterest. <laughs> I'm terrible at other social medias. Okay, so if you are generating all your own traffic, then don't worry so much about being kicked out of search. Worry about 
spending more time on marketing time and money if you want to pay for some ads off-site spending time and money getting more views to your site to your Etsy store yourself so that is that's going to be my plan I'm going to have um, in my Facebook group we're going to be doing a um, Pinterest month next month and the reason I'm doing that is I am going to be focusing more on how to get Pinterest views to my Etsy store so I'm not as dependent upon Etsy to Etsy search to deliver I'm kind of taking my um, shop into my own hands right and you could do that with um, you know you could do that with your Instagram you could do that with your email list you just need to figure out how important Etsy search is to your shop sales and then do, then do it accordingly. And I feel like one last thought. Etsy was originally made as a place for unique handmade vintage sellers and it's not a place where you're supposed I supposedly able to I keep trying not to dip into bitter unhappiness just to be very factual about things um, it's a place to find unique items they don't go to so this is the difference if you think about it this way this is how I think about it if somebody is going to Walmart to buy a gift for themselves or for their friends or family or if they're going to Walmart to buy um, something for their home then they're going to a mass market place to buy mass market right and they expect the price Walmart had better be rolling back those prices and those are commodity items that you can buy anywhere you can buy them on Amazon and have them sent to your home if I want something unique to give to my family my friends all that I go to the little Jones farm gift shop right or I go to the antique mall or I go somewhere that is not a commodity shop to buy things and I may be wrong I may be missing the boat entirely I know my mother-in-law generally will not buy things that do not have free shipping so I have one of those in my house but I also feel like Etsy is still a place where people are going to find things that they can't buy everywhere and hopefully if you decide not to do free shipping you will be able to continue to have your shop and be able to continue to um, sell products that are unique and interesting so I will be monitoring the comments below if you have any questions um, please feel free to leave them if I'm going to be doing a ton of cool Etsy SEO videos in the coming couple weeks it's video month um, some shop reviews some SEO a bunch of SEO and I would love to see you there make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss any of them and you can hit the little bell if you want to see all of them so Tara Jacobson marketing artfully